Normally on my channel, I try and showcase the weirdest wildlife I could find in the strangest habitats here in South Florida. However, in today's video I would like to showcase the amazing mixture of native and invasive wildlife that you could find in urban habitats here in South Florida. Non-natural lakes hold a surprisingly high amount of biodiversity, especially the birds, insects, and reptiles. The reptile I saw the most around this lake was the invasive green iguana. However, there were also many turtles present, especially a lot of these yellow-bellied sliders, a subspecies of the pond slider that could be easily identified by the yellowish crescent-shaped marking behind the eye. It's kind of faded in this individual, but you can still really see it. Mixed in, though, was this Florida red-bellied cooter. Cooters are very similar to sliders, but have more yellow striping on their head, as well as a smoother and flatter shell. This individual is covered with algae on the shell, but in a normal Florida red-bellied cooter, there would be a lot of reddish patterning. The most common insect species around this lake was the familiar bluet, a small damselfly species. These guys aren't that common around where I live, however, they were everywhere around this lake. Mature males are an unmistakable bright blue color. However, they're not safely separated from the similar Atlantic bluet without a good look at the cirque. There were also many interesting birds around this lake, mostly white ibises and Egyptian geese. This pied bill green was actually something quite interesting I'd never seen in this lake before. The most exciting bird of the day, though, was definitely this roseate spoonbill. I had never seen one here before, and the lighting was just perfect making both the bright pink coloration and that strange spoon-shaped beak stick out a lot. This is a relatively young spoon though, because as adults they develop a greenish colored head as well as a bright red shoulder stripe. That weird spoon-shaped beak actually serves a purpose. It is highly sensitive and the tip is very widened to increase the surface area This is a very interesting behavior I had never seen before. The male boat-tailed grackle, or the black one, is trying to court the female boat-tailed grackle, or the brown one. While I have seen males trying to get the attention of females, watching this male completely puff up and flip its wings out is a super strange behavior that, that really isn't too well documented. Oh, and also they never made it. The female eventually chased them off. Still though, it was amazing to see this behavior I had never read about before. While it was great to see so many animals in the outdoor urban environments, the real place to find all the interesting lizards was actually around the buildings. This green anole right here is actually the only native lizard I saw this whole day, easily making it a standout highlight despite how often I see this species. Normally on the walls of the buildings, I see brown anoles, and the green anoles tend to congregate in the trees around the buildings. So it was interesting seeing a little bit of a switch up. Another common and familiar lizard species that I saw around the buildings were the tropical house geckos. A very common, non-native, but not very problematic species in South Florida. While this individual is relatively pale, you could sort of see the distinctive triangular patternings running down the back. That is distinctive of the tropical house gecko, and is much easier to see in darker individuals. Little did I know that this was not the extent of the geckos I was going to see in this habitat. I still don't know how to feel about getting my life for Toke Gecko finally. As beautiful of a lizard as it is, it is equally as terrible of an invasive species in South Florida. Most of their range is in extreme Southeast Florida, like in Miami-Dade County, but they seem to be spreading and it's unfortunate that I've come across multiple of these here at this location. The Toke Gecko is one of the largest species of gecko in the world and is definitely the largest here in Florida. They're unmistakable with that teal base color and orange spots. They are native to Southeast Asia and probably arrived in Florida through the pet trade, 
and similar to the Burmese python, are staying in breeding populations due to how similar the climate is here compared to their native range. The reason these are called the toke gecko is because they're one of the few reptiles that have the ability to vocalize. And while I didn't hear any calling, unfortunately, I could still describe that their call does sound like their name. 